Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the seventh lecture of the course on sociological perspectives on modernity. Okay. Till now, we have discussed thematic preliminaries and the second section, half of it we have covered. I mean, we have discussed Marx's views on modernity, but whichever theorist we are looking at, whichever theoretical trajectory we are looking at, we will always be looking at through the four central philosophical and political foundations of critical modernist paradigm in sociology. Okay? This is very important. We have already discussed Marx's views on modernity against the backdrop of these four pillars of modernity. Now, in another in another three, four lectures, maybe four lectures, including today's seventh lecture, we will be reflecting on Max Weber's interpretations of modernity through the lenses of those four critical uh, paradigms of modernity, four central ideas of modernity, four central themes of modernity, okay? namely holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality and social movements. But before starting with uh, Weber's interpretations of, of uh, modernity. Okay. Let us first see Weber's theoretical and methodological positions to, to tackle modernist paradigm in sociology. Okay. Both Marx and, as well as Weber, their, their intellectual orientations however, remain the same, but the way they look at, uh, uh, but the way they look at uh, uh, modern society uh, and the way they uh, project modern society, the way they envision modern society are quite different. Okay? Will uh, both, both are drawn from uh, German philosophical tradition. Both were writing, uh, both were the byproducts of, I mean, both were writing in the uh, uh, 19th century, Weber a little more than 19th century, I mean, he, he wrote uh, till 1920 when he passed away, uh, I mean, 20th century, but, but almost contemporary, I mean, uh, maybe a gap of 15-20 uh, years. Or 25 years, 30 years, okay, not much. And and both were influenced by industrial revolution in Europe, I mean especially Great Britain, both were influenced by German philosophical tradition, and both were influenced by French Revolution of 1789. In this context, it is interesting to see how Weber tried to reflect on uh, critical modernist paradigm in sociology through his different works, suppose methodological, uh, methodological individualism, 
So, which classes? Religion, Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism, economy and society, methodology of the social sciences. Because whatever methodologies that that were that we formulated for social sciences, it they were modeled on the basis of natural sciences. Okay, for a long time, sociologists as well as social anthropologists, they started with the positivistic tradition. In this context, how Weber deviated from positivism, Marx deviated from positivism in in a different sense. But how Weber deviated from positivism is interesting to examine. In fact, Weber contributed heavily to the development of substantive sociological theory and the and the and to the debates on methodology. Weber's methodological writings are usually characterized as effecting a reconciliation between positivism and neo kantianism what are these two schools of thought as i have already discussed the positivism is a school of thought which emerged uh, in the 19th century uh, and early part of the 20th century it's a very dominant school of thought okay it emerged uh, as a response to both theological stage as well as metaphysical stage. It questioned the dominance of church, I mean all religious institutions. It is a school of thought which places uh, uh, sciences on a higher pedestal vis a vis non sciences. It is, it is such a school of thought. It is a byproduct of enlightenment, industrial revolution, French revolution, where positivists, uh, I mean the proponents of positivism saw the supremacy of sciences over non-sciences. There are several tenets of positivism, there are different characteristics of positivism. To, to name a few that, that that science is distinct from all areas of human activity or creativity because it possesses a method unique to it that is methodological. Science follows certain methods which are very much different from the methods which non sciences follow. Okay? That is how uh, science should be given uh, a unique place in its history in the history of science. Secondly, that there is only one method common to all sciences irrespective of their subject matter, that is methodological monism. Then what kind of method that, that will be absolutely common to all sciences irrespective of their subject matter, whether it is astronomy or physics or chemistry or biology or mathematics? What kind of method? Then the positivists argued that the method of science is the method of in induction. What is that method of induction? Then they, they went back to Baconian philosophy of science, who Bacon was the founder of inductivism. Okay? Inductivism is rooted in empiricism and empiricism is based on experience. We must start with observation, then we arrive at a theory. Without observation, without experience, we do not tend to arrive at a theory. That is what inductivists are doing. Okay? Now, this is inductivism also is known as Baconian philosophy of science or empiricist philosophy. And positivists suggested that no, the method of science is the method of induction. Fourthly, the proponents of positivism argue that the hallmark of science lies in the fact that all scientific statements must be systematically verifiable. 
that is systematic verifiability. Whatever I, I, I tend to claim, I tend to prove, I want, I tend to observe, I must be able to systematically verify it. I just cannot say that, no, it is, it is, uh, I, uh, this is true, but I cannot verify it. No, if it is true, then it must be verifiable for positivists. Okay. Fifthly, there must be a unilinear relationship between observation and theory. Observation leads to the generation of theory, but theory does not lead to the generation of observation. The relationship between observation and uh, theory is unilateral. Observe theories are, I mean theories are for according to positivists, theories are observation dependent, whereas observations are theory independent. Another tenet suggests that there must be a dichotomy, there must be a binary uh, between fact and value. Facts are uh, value neutral, whereas values do not have any factual content. Okay. That is why I gave you this example uh, a couple of lectures back that if this is a, suppose this is a laptop, this is a table, okay. I will say that this is a uh, draft, okay. uh, these are facts. I just cannot tell you, uh, suppose I will say that uh, my, my uh, uh, I mean this pair of glasses of mine, this is a fact, okay. but I cannot tell you, uh, but if I say, uh, but if I say no this pair of glasses uh, looks nice and you say no oh, this pair of glasses looks very ugly, then both of us we add value to it. That is why for positivists, facts are value neutral, whereas values do not have any factual content. Okay. How do we uh, produce knowledge in the positivistic schema? No, only by accumulating more and more observations. Okay. This is, I mean, I mean supremacy of sciences over non-sciences. There cannot be any interpretation that there is only one way of looking at at a particular phenomenon. Whereas uh, new Kantians drawn from the works of Kant, Immanuel Kant, who wrote Critique of Pure Reason. What is pure reason? Okay. It doesn't imply that they were superstitious. No. You see, positivism try to sketch these, these characteristics, keeping the dominance of religious institutions in mind. But, but I mean, but uh, on the, uh, but, uh, I mean, th so that, they, th I mean, th that would enable, uh, that, that in fact enabled them to uh, uh, put forward this argument that, no, uh, science is distinct from all areas of human activity or creativity because it possesses a method unique to it. Okay. This is the thing. But if you, if you look at uh, Kant and subsequently Neo-Kantians, okay, for them the knowledge of the social world is not very objective as positivists argue. For positivists knowledge is very objective, it is not subjective. But for Kant and neo Kantians, especially, particularly neo Kantians, the knowledge of the social world is subjective in nature, is a constructed one. It involves interpretation. I mean, the knowledge of the social world, our knowledge of the social world is, is a constructed one, which involves selection and interpretation of multiple data systems. That is what neo-Kantianism is all about. 
Suppose I will keep on accumulating my observations, but my observations are also uh, my observations also involve certain amount of selection. I do not tend to observe uh, everything. I may observe something, you may observe something, uh, others may observe something, but I do not tend to observe if I will be given or you will be given an option to observe this room. Somebody may say that no, this camera looks uh, beautiful, somebody may say that no, these books look beautiful, somebody may say that no, no, this arrangement does not look nice, somebody may say that no, the lecture is not nice, somebody may say that no, the lecture is good. See, our observations are also, our observations also involve certain amount of selection, we do not tend to observe everything. Okay. This is very important, please keep in mind that we do not tend to observe everything, we always tend to to observe in a selective manner and that selection also is based on certain perspective. Okay. On what basis, uh, what is a perspective then? A perspective refers to a set of symbols which human beings used to select from all potentially observable aspects of nature. When I say nature, it includes both natural and social phenomena. Okay. A perspective is above all a viewpoint, which helps us in selecting, organizing our perceptions and guiding our actions. In this sense, for new Kantians, our knowledge of the social world is a constructed one, is a partial one is a subjective one, it is not objective, it is not absolute. If this is so, then it must involve certain amount of certain criteria of selection and certain criteria of interpretation of multiple data systems. If positivism suggests supremacy of sciences over non-sciences, because science is the most objective thing uh, produced by human species, generated by human species. For neo Kantians, no, our knowledge of the social world including sciences, because what is science? Science is a social creation. <coughs> I mean all knowledge including uh, uh, scientific knowledge is socially caused. Okay. As Bloor said it uh, in knowledge and social imagery, that, that our knowledge of the social world is a constructed one, is subjective, is not absolute, is partial and which involves selection and interpretation of multiple data systems. And Weber's theoretical positions, Weber's methodological writings are usually characterized as effecting or reconciliation between these two extreme schools of thought. Weber did not try to uh, uh, bank only on positivism or only on neo-Kantianism to, to uh, while, while uh, making an argument. Rather, he banked on, uh, uh, he used, he deployed both these uh, schools of thought, both these theoretical constructs, both these, both the uh, uh, methodological devices to, to make his arguments. Okay. Then, then Weber's as I said, Weber, Weber obviously contributed heavily to the development of, of substantive sociological theory and to the debates on methodology. I mean Weber's methodological writings, Weber's theoretical reflections are usually characterized as effecting a reconciliation between positivism and neo-Kantian. 
though Weber's positions were not of course entirely consistent throughout his life, because he always used to oscillate between positivism and neo-Kantianism. Okay? It is possible to say that in general Weber rejected the view attributable to some neo-Kantians that the cultural sciences are exclusively concerned with the uniqueness of their objects of study and, the, and that the category of causality is inapplicable in them. For, for Weber, causality is also applicable to cultural sciences. See, uh, what is culture that way? If I, if somebody, I, I do not want uh, any formal definition, I want uh, you to understand the meaning of it. Okay? Um, uh, if you have uh, watched uh, Three Idiots movie, mm, uh, I do not want you to be Chatur Ramalingam, uh, uh, who, who always uh, that, that tradition of thinking that no, we were to uh, learn by rote. Okay? This is not the way to, I do not want any formal definition. Okay? I want you to understand the meaning involved in in the concept of culture. So, what is culture? See, culture is not like a tree. Once a tree is uprooted, that dies. Culture is not like that. Culture is just like a stream that flows from one generation to the other. Okay? In this sense, New Kantians suggested that the way causality, the aspect of causality is applicable in sciences may not be applicable while studying culture. Whereas, Weber pointed out that, 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 uh, that uh, cultural sciences are exclusively concerned with the uniqueness of their uh, objects of study and that the category of causality is inapplicable in that. Weber was committed on the other hand, okay, Weber rejected first of all the view attributable to some neo Kantians that the cultural sciences are exclusively concerned with the uniqueness of their objects of study. Okay. Where and on, on the other hand, on the contrary, Weber was committed to New Kantian insistence on the methodological peculiarities of the cultural sciences. Okay? For, for Weber, these what are those methodological peculiarities? You know, the, the, these peculiarities centered around two related concepts. One is value relevance and the other interpretative understanding. Okay? We will we'll, we'll discuss value relevance. What is value relevance? What is your value? It is not simply in economic sense. Okay? What is value relevance? What is interpretative understanding of social action and so on? Okay? For, for Weber, the cultural sciences differ from the natural sciences in the distinctive role of valuations, in the formation of concepts and in the distinctive type of knowledge involved in them. A third area of methodological differences was thought by Weber to be the use of idealizations in the cultural sciences. Then first two areas we have seen, one is positivism, the other neo Kantianism, and the third area you will find uh, we are discussing uh, 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 a third area of methodological differences between uh, 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 natural sciences and cultural sciences was thought by Weber to be the use of idealizations uh, in the cultural sciences. Okay? The, the, the way Weber tried to reflect on, on sociology, okay? it is, I mean Weber, Weber uh, uh, talked about sociology as a, as as a reflection of interpretative sociology. I mean, 
for, for according to Weber, sociology in the sense in which this highly ambiguous word is used here is a science which attempts the interpretive understanding of social action in order thereby to arrive at a causal explanation of its course and effects. Then there are three things important here. Okay. What are these three things? Then sociology is a science, not in, in, in uh, uh, I mean both uh, the way positivism tried to sketch science as well as new Kantians the way they try to uh, interpret science. Okay. It is that kind of a science which attempts the interpretive understanding of social action and our interpretations will differ. My interpretation may differ from you, my your interpretation may differ from another person. But what, whichever interpretive understanding of social action that we are going to demonstrate, it must involve a causal explanation. What is an explanation which has a cause and effect relationship? Okay. Then for according to Weber, sociology is a science. He was very much aware of the ambiguities involved in, in, in in the term science itself, having uh, uh, been aware of such ambiguities of the term science uh, for Weber, uh, I mean, so, I mean, uh, science as well as sociology themselves, he, uh, according to him, uh, sociology is a science which which attempts the interpretive understanding of social action in order thereby to arrive at a causal explanation of its course and effects. Okay. An exposition of Weber's methodological position can usefully proceed with an analysis of uh, each of the concepts and contrasts involved in the definition. Okay. These three things, science, okay, interpretive understanding of social action and causal explanation. Okay. Then to start with first, what is that uh, uh, we know now uh, what is science uh, uh, in the positivistic schema. Now, let us see oh, what is social action for Weber. That, that concept of social action for Weber, I mean the characterization of sociology uh, in the schema of the, in the methodological schema of the understanding and explanation of social action. Okay, which involves two important contrasts. Okay. First, uh, what are those two important contrasts? In first, Weber distinguished the paradigmatic objects of sociological knowledge for him, I mean uh, from the supra individual social entities. Okay. What are these paradigmatic uh, uh, objects of sociological knowledge for Weber. Okay. I mean paradigmatic uh, objects of sociological knowledge for Weber refer to individual social actions, their meanings and causes and what are these supra individual social entities, maybe states, institutions, classes, collective consciousness and, and so on. Then, then for Weber, if, if paradigmatic objects of sociological knowledge are indicative of individual uh, action, individual social action, okay, then or, or concerning only individual, then supra individual social entities refer to the collective social action. Okay, that, that there is a contrast. Then, then such such existence is supposed in 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 much sociological theorizing and also everyday thinking about social relations. Okay, then this 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 concept of social action. Okay, the way 
we are talking about interpretative or interpretive so understanding of social action. Okay. That is the that refers to the characterization of sociology as a as a disciplinary formation, as a theoretical construct, as well as a methodological device in 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 the schema of the understanding and explanation of social action, okay, which involves these two contrasts. Okay. Now, I mean these two contrasts, I mean one is paradigmatic objects of sociological knowledge for Weber on the one hand and supra individual social entities on the other. When, when we discuss, when we say understanding and explanation, explanation is often attributed to the school of positivism. Understanding on the other hand is often attributed to the school of neo Kantianism. That is why in research methods, what we generally find that explanation when we talk about uh, in, in quantitative research methods, we very often we attribute explanation to quantitative research methods, whereas we attribute understanding to qualitative research methods. Okay? But there are, there are uh, controversies regarding this. I, 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 I truly uh, admit these controversies and I truly admire those controversies because, because uh, uh, I always believe in the dialectical relationship between both quantitative as well as qualitative. I always believe in the right dialectical relationship between uh, explanation and understanding. Okay. That is why when, when, when this, this this, uh, this, this kind of theoretical and methodological schema of the understanding and explanation of social action, which involves two important contrasts okay, between uh, paradigmatic objects of sociological knowledge for Weber on the one hand and supra individual social entities on the other hand. Okay. If, if, if paradigmatic objects of sociological knowledge for Weber uh, are, are, uh, are concerned with individual uh, uh, social action, individual consciousness okay. mm. and why do they uh, I mean if, if, if I say that individual uh, social actions, uh, why do individuals uh, undertake such action? What are the meanings generated? What are the, why, what are the motives? behind such action. What are the causes of such action? Okay? And when I when when Weber referred to the supra individual social entities, namely states, institutions, classes, collective consciousnesses and so on, this is very important. Okay. Then he always I mean uh, I mean Weber always tried to Look, situate the concept of social action, ex, social action, as a, as as affecting, or as as uh, as affecting a reconciliation between the two, between the two. I mean, between the paradigmatic objects of uh, sociological knowledge for him, on the one hand, and and the the supra individual social entities on the other, and such 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 existence, such delineation is supposed in much sociological theorizing and also everyday thinking about social relations. Okay. Weber indeed does not actually deny the existence of such entities. Okay. This, this, whether, whether they are paradigmatic objects of sociological knowledge or supra individual social entities. Okay. Weber actually does not deny the existence of such entities, but argues that for interpretative sociology they must be treated as solely the resultants and modes of organization of the particular acts of individual, individual persons. Okay. Whereas, Marx was always referring to 
collective social action was always referring to collective consciousness, intellectual consciousness, political consciousness, class consciousness, class struggle. Okay. Weber deviated from that position and, and he always argues that if, if you, you uh, for, for interpretative sociology, okay, uh, uh, such entities, okay, entities I mean those paradigmatic uh, objects of knowledge, sociological knowledge on the one hand and supra individual social entities on the other, okay, must be treated as solely the resultants of modes of organization of the particular acts of individual persons. When, when, when any, any change um, was attributed to, to the existing mode of production by Marx, okay. uh, but for Weber uh, uh, such, such uh, uh, paradigmatic objects of sociological knowledge as well as supra individual social entities okay, uh, must be treated as solely the resultants and modes of organization of the particular acts of individual person. Then whereas Marx emphasized more on, stressed more on uh, uh, the collective, Weber emphasized on, stressed more on um, the, the individual. Okay. Perhaps for this reason Weber's position here would now be regarded as methodological individualist. Okay. Uh, involving the claim that in so far as collectivities may be said to have characteristics independent of the individuals which make them up, those characteristics are to be explained in terms of individual actors and their actions. That is why what is methodological individualism? We will we'll come, come to this point a little while later. But then as Weber tried to emphasize more on the aspect of individual, individual social action, their meanings, the meanings are, uh, the meanings which are generated through those individual social action, the meanings which are attached to those individual social actions, the causes of those individual social actions, the motives of those individual social actions, okay, they are important for 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 Weber. Okay. Uh, in in the modernist control of 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 agency, okay, if society or new social order or collective became uh, the hallmark in the Marxist schema, okay, uh, then then individual social actions, their meanings, their causes, their motives, they they assume greater significance in the in in the schema of Weber uh, 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 so far as the modernist construal of uh, of new social order is concerned. Okay? That is why Weber's uh, methodological individualist position involves the claim that in so far as the uh, in so far as collectivities may be uh, uh, said to have characteristics independent of the individuals which make them up those characteristics must be explained in terms of only individual actors and their actions the meanings which are attached to those actions the the reasons of those actions the motives behind those actions, the causes of those actions. Okay? Then, then, then we will we'll come to this point that uh, what is this, what, what do, we do? do we talk about methodological individualist position? What is that methodological individualism? Okay. Uh, what did uh, uh, Weber refer to when he talked about methodological individualism? Okay. This is very important. Okay. 
methodological individualism refers to theoretical positions holding that adequate sociological accounts necessarily involve reference to persons I mean individuals their interpretations of their circumstances and the uh, and the reasons and motives for the actions that they take and, and such action by no means necessarily uh, uh, follows from the sharing of a class situation okay for 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 uh, for marx whatever collective social action that we undertake okay it follows from a from the sharing of a common class situation but for weber no it may not emanate from a common class situation it may emanate from status, then uh, the proponents of Marxism would argue that no, what is status? Status is gained through class, but for Weber no, oh, status may be gained through education, may be politics, may be party building, it is not simply through class for Marx. If, if, for, if for Marx, uh, uh, it is not simply through classes for Weber. If for Marx, classes are manifestations of economic differentiation, for Weber, classes are based on two parameters, at least two parameters. One is life chances and the other causal component. We will discuss this, this in the next lecture, uh, uh, that uh, what are life chances, what are causal components. I mean not next, but next to next lecture, I mean um, when we will be dealing with holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality and social movements, modernity, I mean uh, all these parameters, uh, uh, we will we'll, we'll get into, we will we'll definitely discuss this, this uh, the uh, what are life chances, causal components and so on. For, for Marx, the, the, the way, uh, so not for Marx, but for Weber, for Weber what methodological individualism indicates? It indicates certain theoretical positions. Okay. Uh, what are those theoretical positions? What are those conceptual categories? Those theoretical positions, those conceptual categories, okay, uh, they were they were um, promoted. I mean, the, the, I mean, they were uh, exhibited through the notions of rights, fundamental right, equality, choice, preference, okay? my, my, uh, my freedom okay? in, in the collective conscience, uh, what is the significance, what is the role of an individual? Okay? That, uh, that the idea of, the idea of exercise my, my fundamental right, my, uh, my, my, um, the idea of exercising uh, uh, my right to make selection, my right to have equality, my right to have freedom, okay? these, these constitute crucial elements of methodological individualist position uh, in Weber's schema. That is why when Weber said, no methodological uh, uh, individualism uh, uh, refers to uh, uh, certain theoretical positions which hold that adequate sociological accounts necessarily involve reference to individuals, their interpretations of their circumstances and the reasons and motives for the actions uh, that they take. Okay? Then there are three characteristics of this. this this methodological individualist position which Weber undertook. What are those? What are those three parameters? No, first parameter that methodological individualism when we look at, when we examine, we must look at individuals first, individuals as social actors, individual actors. Then not only individual actors, but also individual actions. 
and the way secondly the way individuals attempt to interpret their circumstances their conditions their contexts their uh, backgrounds my circumstance may be different from your circumstance your circumstance may be different from my circumstance if our circumstances differ then our accents will also differ our individual accents will definitely differ if our circumstances differ if our circumstances differ then the the uh, then the kind of accents that we are going to undertake if they will also differ they are bound to differ if our circumstances differ then our circumstances uh, uh, also involve the the reasons uh, also involve the motives for the actions that we undertake this is the third one i mean first one is individuals individual actors as well as individual actions secondly uh, individual actors mm, interpretations of their circumstances their conditions their contexts their backgrounds and so on and thirdly the reasons and motives for the actions that individuals undertake okay in the um, in the next lecture in the next lecture we are going to discuss interpretative understanding okay then what we have discussed today we started with max weber's theoretical approaches and methodological writings and as we have already discussed weber's theoretical positions and methodological writings are usually characterized as effecting a reconciliation between uh, positivism as well as neo kantianism and uh, uh, weber at times he was critical of uh, neo kantians that uh, i mean uh, weber rejected the view attributable to uh, some neo kantians that the cultural sciences are exclusively concerned with the uniqueness of their objects of study and that the category of causality is inapplicable in them uh, weber however was committed to neo kantian insistence on the methodological peculiarities of the cultural sciences and and uh, and for weber what are those methodological peculiarities i mean those methodological peculiarities centered around two related concepts namely value relevance and interpretative understanding and um, for for weber the cultural sciences differ from uh, the natural sciences in the distinctive role uh, uh, of valuations in the formation of concepts and in the distinctive type of knowledge involved in them as a consequence of which a third area of methodological differences was thought by weber to be the use of idealizations in the cultural sciences from from here uh, weber weber uh, defines sociology uh, as a science uh, which which um, attempts the interpretive understanding of social action in order thereby to arrive at a causal explanation of its course and effects and such exposition of weber's methodological position can usefully proceed with an analysis of analysis of each of the concepts and contrasts involved in the definition then then if uh, there are three things which uh, weber tried to unfurl Uh, in his definition of sociology that one is science secondly uh, interpretive understanding of social action and then causal explanation okay let us begin with concept of social uh, we 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 discussed social action uh, in this lecture that uh, that is the characterization of sociology in the schema of the understanding and explanation of social action which involves two important contrasts i mean contrasts between paradigmatic uh, objects of sociological knowledge for weber namely individual social actions their uh, meanings and causes on the one hand uh, and uh, the supra individual social entities namely 
uh, states, uh, institutions, classes, collective consciousness or whatever on the other, whose existence is supposed in much sociological theorizing and, and also everyday thinking about uh, social relations. Okay. Weber, Weber uh, does not actually uh, deny the existence of such, such uh, entities, uh, uh, I mean the entities of both, I mean both paradigmatic objects of sociological knowledge as well as the supra individual social entities, but argues that for uh, mm, interpretative sociology they, uh, uh, they must be treated, I mean such such uh, supra individual uh, social entities must be treated as solely the resultants and modes of organization of the particular acts of individual persons. Hence, Weber's position here would now be regarded as methodological individualist involving the claim that in so far as collectivities um, may be said to have characteristics independent of the individuals which make them up those characteristics are to be explained, must be explained in terms of individual uh, actors and their actions. Okay? And then, then we, 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 uh, uh, we are trying to uh, end this lecture with, with Weber's uh, reflections on methodological individualism which refers to the theoretical positions which hold that adequate sociological accounts necessarily involve reference to at least three uh, uh, things. Uh, one, individuals, uh, two, uh, uh, individuals interpretations of their circumstances and three, um, the reasons and motives for the actions that those, these, these particular individuals take. And, and in, in contradistinction with Marx, uh, Weber uh, suggests that such action by no means necessarily follows from the sharing of a common class situation. This is very important. I mean, Marx always said that uh, uh, wh whatever collective social action that 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 uh, takes place, uh, it always follows from the sharing of a common class situation. For him, for, for, for Marx, uh, change is very important and whatever change occurs, it is only through classes. Okay? Okay? Ultimately, it is a history of class. Okay? We, are, we do not talk about history of one particular individual, but for Weber, the, the, the kind of uh, uh, um, um, reference that we are making to individuals, individual social actions, individual actors, uh, their interpretations of their circumstances and the reasons and motives for the actions that these individuals take, such action by no means necessarily follows from the sharing of a common class situation. Okay? Having said this, in the next lecture, uh, we are going to discuss interpretative understanding of social action. I mean, Verstehen, I mean, understanding, I mean, in German, uh, Verstehen means understanding uh, and what are the methodological peculiarities that we find in interpretative understanding, uh, uh, whether the, there is direct understanding or indirect understanding, direct understanding is alternatively known as observational understanding, whereas indirect understanding is alternatively known as explanatory understanding and so on. And uh, what is culture for Weber? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, then we'll discuss tomorrow uh, what kind of uh, uh, methodological implications on modernity uh, uh, that uh, that Weber's uh, uh, writings have. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, on on economic phenomena, economically relevant phenomena, and economically conditioned phenomena and what kind of relationship that economy and religion can forge uh, uh, and they cannot be separated in our day to day life according to Weber. Okay? Uh, we will discuss uh, 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 from interpretative understanding in detail in the next lecture. Thank you.